The Bible says that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the nations and then the end will come. This is a prediction made by Jesus Christ, him being the Son of God. Now, when you consider how many prophecies and predictions that he's made or were made about him and became true, then you know that whatever and every prediction and, and, and prophecy that Jesus Christ is ever made is 100% true and it will come to pass. You know it. He's coming is very close. Thank you, sir. Amen. I read the Bible every day. Yes. The, what's going on today? This has been predicted in great detail. He says that in the last days there will be famines. In the last days there will be wars. Nation will rise against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. What we see unfolding today. Jesus Christ prophesied about this. The prophets of old spoke about this. Exactly as it is happening today. That's what Jesus said. It doesn't make sense to hide under the cardboard when the building is on fire. It doesn't make any sense. When the building is on fire, you don't run to the wardrobe. You run out of the building. But it seems today like, as we are confronted with the truth, of the current situation it seems to me like whether it's the truth or not people just don't want to hear it if the building is on fire you don't go run into the water you get out the building you evacuate. That's what the gospel is all about. Because the place called hell is real. A place called heaven is real and a place called hell is real. The difference between the two places is the cross of Jesus Christ. As Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was hanging on the cross like this. And he was saying, you can either go to the left, you can either go to the right. What Jesus was really saying was that the difference between heaven and hell is your faith in him. The world is living in fear today. People are scared stiff. But I want you to know you can put your trust in Jesus. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is life. You can put your trust in Jesus. You can put your trust in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Now I know a lot of people have problems with that. But he's on record as having said that. Not only once, not only twice. 
but a good five, six times. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. After claiming to be the Son of God, he went to the cross and died on that cross. After dying on that cross, they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And after three days, he rose from the dead. Jesus has power over life and death. He's proved it, you've seen it yourself. By the resurrection. Which is why we celebrate Easter. We celebrate Easter because we're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That, that Easter what? That Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday is all about the resurrection of Christ. It means Jesus was from the dead. If Jesus Christ is life and if Jesus was from the dead, since he is life and since he was from the dead, then it makes perfect sense to put your faith in him. Instead of running around in fear, crippled by fear, because of what's happening now, all you can do is put your trust in Christ. That's what you can do. You can put your trust in Jesus Christ. That way you know eternal life is yours. That way you know that your name is written in the book of life. I will come back to what I said earlier. The Bible makes it very clear that what, what's happening right now has already been spoken about thousands and thousands of years ago in great detail. In great detail. That should tell you to get up the building. That should tell you that you can escape the fires of hell. You see, whether you believe in the in the place called hell or not, it doesn't mean that the place ceases to exist. Whether you don't want to think about that place called hell, it doesn't mean that that place called hell ceases to exist. It's like me telling myself that uh, there's no there's no there's no such a place uh, uh, called London, or there's no such a place called uh, Manchester. Whether I want to believe that a place called London or not is real, the place remains there. We have been lied to into thinking that if you believe it, then it, it, that's it. If you don't believe it, then you're okay. Because I've got a question on that. Let's say, for example, you don't believe that there's a place called hell. Why is it that the conscience continues to arrest us. If there's no such place called hell, if hell is not a real place, why is it that people are living in fear? If a place called hell is not real, why do you get a sting in your conscience? Why is that fear of judgment? down inside you. Everybody has that. Except those that are watched in the blood of the Lamb. Except those that believe in Jesus. Are you settled in your heart? 
ease your conscience. Quiet. Is it? You know what we do as people? When we come out, we put on a mask. The art of putting on a smile, we've got that one down to a T. We want everyone to believe that we are doing okay. We want everyone to believe that um, we don't have the gate of sin. We want everyone to believe that we're going to cry inside from, tra from tragedy, tragic events, from heartbreaks, heartaches, from the bruises, and from the hurt that we experience in life. In fact, that's why some, some drink just so they can forget. Just so they don't have to think about a specific thing that's bothering them. But you see, and I say this um, with all sincerity because I, I used to drink as well. Peace is not found at the bottom of the pines. Peace is found in Jesus Christ. The conscience will never rest until you come to Jesus. You will never find inner peace until you come to Jesus. There is no forgiveness of sin until you come to Jesus. There is no relationship with God as a loving father until you come to Jesus. Your name can never be written in the Lamb's book of life until you come to Jesus. So you remember asking me a question like also, oh, how do you know that the, your Jesus is the right way? What about other people and what they say? I only have one answer to that. The answer is that it's only Jesus Christ who's on record to have been risen from the dead. That's it. The reason why Christianity stands alone from all other faiths is because Christianity is the only faith that has a man who laid down his life willingly. He was buried for three days and on that Easter Sunday he actually really did rise from the dead. That's the difference between Christianity and everything else. The Christian faith is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anybody who is honest, anybody who is okay with looking at the truth, Christianity is a historical event. The resurrection of Jesus is a historical event. It actually did happen. You don't have to live in fear, you know. You don't have to live in anxiety. You don't have to live in that stress. Jesus can wipe away the tears from your face. The hurt that we go through, the pain that we go through, the disappointment in life, the heartaches, the heartbreaks, all of that.
Jesus went to the cross for that. You don't have to live in fear. Because at that cross, Jesus Christ took away all of that. You don't have to live in depression. Because on that cross, Jesus Christ took away all of that. You don't have to look to uh, live life with a defeated mentality. Because they put that crown of thorns on Jesus' head for you. The crown of thorns they put on the head of Jesus Christ was for your mental health. Is was to give you a sound mind. The Bible says that as Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and as he was praying, he started to sweat profusely. And as he was sweating, he was sweating great drops of blood. People today are overwhelmed with what's going on. And yet Jesus Christ took that overwhelming, overwhelming message for that. People are living in pressure today. And yet Jesus in that garden of Gethsemane, as he was praying, sweating blood, under pressure, overwhelmed, he did that for you. They took him into the Roman homes. They stripped his back off bad. They whipped him so bad you could see the you could see the bones on his back. That was for your healing. They blindfolded him and they beat him up beyond recognition. That was to restore your dignity. That was to restore the image of God. Because you see. You were created in the image of God. God made you in his image. The Bible says that when God made man, he said, let us make man after our image, after our likeness. When God made you, he made you out of his very best. That's why when things went wrong in the Garden of Eden through the deception of Satan, God had to send his very best. There's no reason to live in fear. There's no need to live in fear at all. Because Jesus Christ is the author of life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We all know that one. No, I won't be the fire of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You were never meant to live in fear. God never meant that for you. The inner peace and the joy that you're looking for is in Jesus Christ. The satisfaction and the fulfillment you're looking for is in Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the answer to all of your life's questions. It's a decision you have to make despite your family. It's a decision you have to make despite your own friends. Because that day of judgment is a, is a real day. It's a set date. And on that date, every single one of us will have to come before God one by one. Judgment is not about family. It's not about friends. It's about an individual. And that individual is you. When God begins to ask you the one question that you will ask you on that day, He's not going to ask a couple of friends, He's going to ask an individual, and that individual is you. I'm going to leave you with this one here. On that day, the one question that God's going to ask you is this What did you do when you had the gospel? What did you do with my son Jesus? 
when you heard about the cross of Christ, when you heard about Jesus dying for you on that cross, paying the price for your sin, making reconciliation between man and God, being warned about the day of wrath to come, what did you do with my gospel? That's the only question God's going to ask you. One question. What did you do with my son Jesus? I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon. And I will leave you with that thought. And may the grace of God fill the town of Oldham. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.